becomes a hero. What it's telling us is this, that we have 10,000 years of wandering around and incarnating and experiencing, etc. And then eventually we stop the process of being turned into animals by Circe, into swine, and we rise above, we ascend. Eventually we wake up and we return to Greece from the war of Troy. Troy is going down to fight in incarnation. It's, it's going down to, to taste of incarnation and fighting and warring and struggling. But um, returning and going back to Greece means uh, being saved, being awakened. Okay, well, let's uh, grab some questions then, shall we? And um, uh, I don't know, are we going to do the um, voice audio questions, uh, David? If if so, um, I probably need some help. I don't know. I don't know how we do that. Uh, do we just press? Uh, I suppose I suppose I take my um, my talk now. Turn that off. Is that so? Not sure. Sure. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. All right. I'll do that now. I'm I'm clicking off. Hi everybody, as the moderator here, I'll just quickly go through how you actually use the Talk Now button for those of you that have the confidence uh, of wanting to talk directly to Santos. At any time when the conference is running, if you click on the button, the icon button at the top right hand corner of your conference... It's like it's me, I didn't expect it to go on. Hi Santos, um, I can't even think of my question now. Um... Yeah, look, I just want to hear probably a little bit more information about how the sun plays a part in our consciousness. Um, hello, guys. Hi, Donna. Um, with the sun and the activity of the sun, I just feel sometimes that the energy comes through in waves, like this last big CME that we've had, the feeling that I got from that. And I know it sounds a bit weird, but... I definitely felt um, it was very energetic and um, and I feel that my wanting to research comes in waves and I'm wondering how connected to that is the sun. I have a real feeling of love for our sun and I'm just wondering if you can elaborate some more on that. Hi Colleen, hi Sophia, hi Craig. All right, I will click the button now. Great question. Thanks, D. That That's a nice one to deal with because um, the sun is, um, remember, <clears throat> the hermetic axiom, as above, so below, so below as above. Now, that's that's the complete, uh, usually we, we just hear as above, so below, and we forget the second half. The second half is very important. Very important. As below, so above. So, so, if you're feeling, what, what you're feeling, rest assured, as above is feeling the same thing. Rest assured, as above, so below, so below, so above. Or as below, so above. Because man is the measure of the universe. And um, yes, the CME, the CME is at the moment a wrecking havoc with our emotions. Absolutely. The emotions are like they're like they're magnetic, okay. So here's these these massive coronial ejections coming out and reaching our earth far quicker than it used to, and of course affecting us much more because our magnetic um, you know, poles have shifted and the nature of our the Earth's mag magnetic shield has uh, shifted. So yeah, we we are getting um, bombarded. And I'll tell you, I've been talking to a lot of people who are not doing it well these few days. If you think you're you're struggling, I think we're there's a lot more out of us out there that there's a lot of people right now who are really feeling tired. Tired is one of the symptoms. These um, these photons that are that are coming from the sun, like they're very very powerful. And of course, the sun is. Always moving and spiraling heliacal. See, it's like a corkscrew, 
and it charges through the heavens and we follow in the wake. We are being, we are being pulled along by Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent. And where it goes is always to a place that will be for our benefit. The sun does not take, even when it takes us through the, even as we, in the 24,000 year processional cycle, it goes from the golden age to the iron age. This has nothing to do with evil or um, it has nothing to do with um, anything bad at all. The sun does this for our love. The, soul, the, the sun is our saviour. And it does everything for us. It gives its life for us in winter at midnight. It rises in the morning every day for us. It grows the grapes for the wine that we drink every year. It climbs up to the Tropic of Cancer to bring summer back to us or any of the favourite season, season that we may have, spring, winter. Some people love autumn. Uh, it, it shoots off pho photons which produce photosynthesis to sustain us, for us. It, our souls are being evolved and growing for us. It is changing its consciousness now for us. We were attracted to this sun. This sun, which the Jews call Yeshua, Jesus, and the um, Romans were calling him Sabasius or Mithras from the Persians. Ra, the Jews, Abraham. The, the, um, Egyptians, Horus, Osiris, there was Bacchus, Dionysus. Whatever name, these are all schools. These are all ancient mystery schools. All of those names have a school attached to them. They are schools, like the Pythagorean school, or the Platonic school, the Socratic school, Aristotelian school. They're just schools. And you say, see, so the hero is the name of the school. Bacchus was... Jesus, they're, they're, it's all the same. It's all the same entity, just different schools, different languages, te te teaching the same science. And that science is that the sun is our sustainer, because its light has three natures: physical, psychic, and spiritual. And therefore, it saves us physically. There's no doubt about that. There's no other body that loves us as much in our near vicinity. When you look up and see all those glorious stars of which there is no two alike, they are all different in their signature frequency vibration that reaches your pupil when you look up and you see those stars. Each one has a special signature of light that reaches your eyes and gives you something and is attached to you magnet mag magnetically. And um, so our sun is... When you look up and you see those stars, all of them are far away. There is only one that is next to us. There's only one star that is so close to us that we can feel the direct warmth which sustains our bodies. And as Paracelsus said, in fact, I will, um, I'll try and get Paracelsus because, wow... I hope you don't mind. This is a long uh, answer to your question, B, and uh, but you're going to love this. I know you will. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, this is what Paracelsus says about the sun and the fact that it it um, it is always uh, nourishing either our spirit or our soul or our body because, like water, it has the ability to live in three of the four worlds. Water can be solid, ice, liquid water, or gas. Air, uh, uh, um, sorry, light is exactly the same. We, these are light bodies, so light has the quality that is able to sustain physical bodies. Light also has a quality that can sustain psychic, emotional, and mental bodies. And light is also spiritual. 
it is also spiritual. And this is what love and life is. See, we can't see love and life with your eyes. You can't see it's what it's made of because it's spiritual. But that the light, the light has the ability to uh, to be love and life. Um, so um, let's see if I can find the beautiful comment where he, where he, he talks about. Um, how the sun is able to um, sustain. Well, look, as I look for that, I'll take another question. So um, I'll, I'll get off now, and please, uh, uh, anyone who has another question, come up. Hello? Can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Hi, Santos. Um, I have a question. You spoke earlier in uh, the beginning of the conference about sovereignty and how we are um, we are all becoming um, conscious and aware and trying to become. Hi. How are y'all doing? <laughs> um, we are all be trying to become sovereign and um, helping other people become sovereign and the helping other people become a community of sovereign people to stand up. I want to know, do you are are you developing that type of community around you? And could you tell us um, if you are what that is like? Could you speak a little bit more about that situation, if you would please? Thank you. Okay, um, yeah, I'm not uh, sure whether that's the path that I uh, have time to, I'd love to. I would love to be uh, someone like Franco Collins here in Australia. Um, Max Egan is doing a great job. David, our moderator, David is, um, uh, is right into, understands um, sovereignty, law, and, and everything. We've got some great Australians. There's a guy over in Perth called Rob Halpford. Hel Hel is that his name? We, we mentioned him last week, actually. No, I forget his name <laughs> this week. Sorry. But um, I, I hope I hope we can do something like that. That would be great. I um, I'd love to. Um, Focus more of my attention on on research of the um, of the science of as above so below and and guys this is what I I'll share with you what I really intend to do um, and that is I want to do uh, foreign language videos as soon as possible uh, all I need is the time and I just need a break to do, be able to do it you know I mean I've been sort of really busy getting this out in English I've got twelve English presentations now and um, and I'm happy with that. I can, even though I've only scratched the surface, I've only scratched the surface. Believe me, <laughs> there's so much more that I've been researching. I still haven't been able to do anything because of lack of time. Okay, uh, but I really want to do a, um, a solid presentation on in Italian and Spanish because they're my most two competent languages, and I shouldn't struggle with those to to get this this same truth that you're getting out there. And there's millions of Spanish people in the world, millions of Italians that will love it. In fact, I'm getting um, people from Rome, southern Italy, all around the world that are Italian and writing to me in Italian, telling me how much they love this science and telling me that I should do something in Italian. But obviously they understand English, English enough. Um, and that's what I want to do. And then I want to do some French and Portuguese ones. I'm going to struggle with those two languages, you know, to be able to be precise in that high register. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to give it a go because I think it's urgent. And so um, I hope, um, you know, you can appreciate, guys, uh, if I'm sort of um, appear to be aloof. I'm, I'm not aloof at all in, in, um, in anything. Every second of my days for the last four years have been devoted to research and sharing this knowledge and wisdom. But I really... Something's telling me that I've got to do these in other languages now. And I just can't find time. You know, I've got computers clinking, 
crashing. My phone's gone now. I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing uh, <laughs> um, phones from people that don't work. <laughs> so um, I just need the time. And, and so to answer your question, <laughs> sorry, um, I think uh, I won't be doing that. But um, I can offer enough... Um, I mean, I can point to people like Dean Collins and Franco Collins, uh, Dean um, Clifford and Franco Collins, and they are doing this. They have communities. Franco Collins, I think, has one of the best. And and Dean Clifford, you can sign up to Dean Clifford's. Um, it's called. Um, is anyone? I think Academy. Now, if you're still there, you you would know um, Dean Clifford's uh, organisation. You can sign up to and be free free man. Yeah. Do you know Dean Clifford's? Um, the name of his, um, uh, you, you can sign up. I think it costs, uh, it's a small fee and you can be a sovereign. So there are these communities. World Freeman Society, that's it. Thank you, Cindy. Your beauty. Oh, okay. Sorry, Carmina, put you on the spot there. <laughs> All right, look, I'll uh, get off now and I'll... Hello, can you hear me? No, 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 no sound. Brilliant, okay. Um, what I'd like to ask um, Santos is Kundalini. What is the best way um, that we can achieve Kundalini? Um, I understand that it is very, very important. I also understand um, that we need to meditate and be more mindful and that's also very important to understand in what we're doing every day. Um, but I've been on this path for quite a while now and have had some, um, it started off with some strange experiences and, um, and as we all progress, like we're all on this path, as we start off, we go on different routes, different roads. Um, I went through a very tough time. Now I'm evening out. Now I'm just getting so much information coming to me. And I feel, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I'd just like to know um, what is the best way to progress. Just gather all this information, speak to as many people as we know, try to do as many things. Um, is achieving Kundalini the, the best thing that we can do is that the most important thing that we should also be concentrating on as a group okay <laughs> thank uh is it a thing that we should be concentrating yes it's a um it's a um it will come as a result of consciousness growing the consciousness um, and the way to do that is through meditation, breathing yoga, good eating, good thinking, etc. Um, but but mostly through I would I would say mostly through meditation. Meditation is I'm not I'm not really a person who devotes a lot of time to going out to the trees and sitting there and, and really meditating and, and stuff like that, you know, because as, as, but my meditation is I'm reading a book. When I'm reading a book, uh, you know, I can be so absorbed in that book that I can feel through breathing correctly and, um, and relaxing, I can feel that that energy always traveling upward. It's always flushing up, flushing. Uh, so I guess I do it uh, by by focus and intent, I, I, I guess. I, and and breathing. Breathing has helped me. Uh, if I didn't learn how to breathe about eight eight or nine years ago, um, I'd be uh, I'd be in a bad way. I'm very very. Uh, 
I'm the sort of person that is very uh, nervously um, tempered. Being Calabrian doesn't help, believe me. Growing up uh, as, a, as a Calabrian, my father was a very, uh, very nervous man. He was a Virgo, Virgo, and, and he was um, he was aloof as a father. You know, he, he didn't pay me much attention, and he was always angry and busy. <laughs> um, but that anger, that short temper of the southern Italian sort of uh, came through. It was always there in the family and the relatives and everything like that. It doesn't help. And it doesn't help being Aries and very fiery like me and having the planet Mars in Leo. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. That's Mars is hot and dry, and he's in the house of the sun, Leo, adding more fire to the heart. You know, so there's all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impatient and things like that. If I did not learn how to breed, I'd, I'd probably be dead. It's what say, it saved me. And, it, and, it's, and it's helped me, especially since, 19, uh, since 2008. Uh, I've learned how to circular breed, you know. You, you command your breath from up here. It's once you start... See, breathing is one of these things where you can take control of it. And but when you stop taking control of it, it takes care of itself, right? You don't automatically stop breathing if you if you're busy and you forgot to take a breath. It's going to take care of itself, right? But you can override that, and you can take it over, and you can just say, no, this is how I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take deep breaths and send them deep down into my abdomen, and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to send it down into the front. Okay, so you might do that for three, four breaths. Then you put your hands on your side and you feel your sides expanding and contracting. And then you put them in your back. Put your hands on your back and feel. Feel where the air is going. Feel as it goes down and it sinks deep. I think breathing is probably the best thing you can do. Because once you master breathing like a surfer masters the waves, then you're able to sort of because air, well, what is breath? Breath is Holy Spirit. It's chi, prana. And the Japanese say ki, reiki. When they do reiki, they're dealing in breath. It's all breath. Everything is breath. It's Holy Spirit. So, and by the way, breathing is where you get 95% of your energy from. It's not water and food. If people think, oh, you know, it's, it's all water and all... It's not. Our energy supply is the air. It's oxygen. It's what we breathe in. See, so it is energy. It's dynamic energy, the Holy Spirit. And uh, so when you learn how to um, breathe like that, you can feel the, um, the energy going up your spine. Now, look, there are other doors to the heavens, okay? Uh, sacred sex. I did speak a little bit about this uh, last time, and... Um, I really recommend that one reads um, that one reads the chapter. In fact, in fact, this is what I will do. <clears throat> um, next week, I, I'll ele- announce now that next week's um, uh, webinar will be dealing with uh, uh, how we can how sex can benefit one spiritually because sex is spiritual. Okay, now. Um, like like food is is for sustenance, and yet we have a palate to enjoy it. it. Food is not for the palate. Food is for the sustenance and the nutrition. Same with sex. The palate of sex, the fleshly aspects of sex, are very desirable, very pleasing to our fleshly organism. <clears throat> but they are a distraction and a diversion from the true purpose of sex, and that is not for pleasure and procreation. It is for transmutation. Sex is very powerful to get your kundalini energy going up your spine. And, uh, but it's, it's the kind that preserves the energy rather than wasting it. And in particular, that, um, that advice goes to men because um, men can 
men actually give something when they have sex and that's a sperm and that's a powerful energy in in there and um in saving that not only do you save energy but you also the energy that is saved goes towards transmutation and it goes toward raising the kundalini energy slowly and slowly slowly and slowly and so we'll deal with that next week and i'll also like to deal with the origin of evil the dark satellite from this book so there's your your, your two um subjects for next week um but another thing i would like to say and i won't say too much about it because many people get stumbled when you talk about this one and you know like when jesus said unless you eat my body and drink my flesh you cannot have any part in salvation and many left the lord and said oh we cannot listen to this disgusting speech so they got stumbled well this one's a stumble up but um if you're um non-judgmental and you're a conscious human being uh you shouldn't be stumbled but nonetheless um the subject of entheogens may not be for you now entheogens are um psychedelics and hallucinogens they are not amphetamines barbiturates and anything for this they don't do anything for the kundalini whereas um psilocybin mushrooms amanita muscaria mushrooms um plants that have dmt there you go there's another one ayahuasca guys if you if you know that you're ready and you would um you know you would uh, perhaps be inclined to um do something like that i would do it that's my advice and there are a lot of guys out there like Graham Hancock John Lamlash who are taking entheogens regularly and benefiting um immensely because they do open portals in the mind they are crystals you're introducing our little brother crystals into the into the electrochemical um computer that you have up here and that densification of those crystals is what makes your brain vibrate a lot higher and you are able to receive better information okay but at, at the same time um you have to do your research and I'm not giving anybody any um advice on that just that uh, I take infusions and I've benefited immensely immensely if um if you do um you know have a notepad and pen because you're you are going to have a lot of revelations and there are great doctors around the world who are using LSD in with one dose of LSD to cure people with all sorts of horrible trauma depression suicidal ten- tendencies etc and they have worked it's a miracle drug okay Santos, I don't know if we just lost you or not, or whether you accidentally clicked on the talk now button in the middle of speaking. You just cut out. Sorry. Okay. I don't. I don't know what happened, but uh, I did go off because I was waiting for someone to. Um to uh do a question. So if anyone's ready for a question, just hop on please. Um uh, now I I've noticed a, a few comments about the drugs. Guys, it's these are plants. These are holy plants. In fact, all of the religious um hermetic scientists have taken these plants. Okay? They are natural plants that have consciousness. Plants have consciousness. Everything you eat gives you its consciousness. Okay? So all foods are drugs. Coffee's a drug. 
uh, alcohol is a drug, anything you put into your body, it will, uh, it will act as a drug. It will have DMT, it will have some of these properties. That's all it is. Uh, so please don't, don't um, be, um, please don't be, uh, what's the word, uh, horrified. Um, some of the best inventions, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, they all took the plants. They didn't take drugs. It's not about drugs like Big Pharma and, uh, and narcotics and things like that. These, these are damaging, very damaging. And you see people getting around with heroin, injecting heroin and taking cocaine and crack, ruining their health um, and despising their health and disrespecting their bodies by taking them. But no one is, is um, committing anything bad when they take an entheogen. The, this is natural. And we're always encouraged to by the um, by the uh, the philosopher and the uh, and the thinker and the know. So because it gives it it gives a more it opens it it shuts down the the filters and opens the portals in the mind, which are natural. Okay, um, so anybody who's got a question now, just hop on. Go for it. Uh, do I need to? I think I'll go off. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Am I? Can you guys hear me? Because I don't know if my camera is on. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, Santos, I just want to say first of all, thank you so much for showing up and doing what you're doing. Um, I just randomly got one of your videos on YouTube and uh, it was just the perfect message, the perfect video at the perfect time. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. So a big thank you. I have um, a two part question. Um, the first part is the last uh, two years of my life, starting when I turned 33 years old, um, there's just been a tremendous amount of change in my life, really positive change. And it all started with a decision uh, of changing my diet and um, becoming a vegan. And it, it started off just for health reasons, and then it blossomed into this whole spiritual thing. And what I found that has really been significant in the last two years is me listening to my intuition. So the first part of my question is, is can you talk a little bit about intuition and how the solar system influences our intuition and then the second part of the question is you hear a lot of talk and it's been my experience that quote unquote time is speeding up if you can talk a little bit about time and how it seems to be speeding up again thanks so much for what you're doing brother uh Intuition is uh, very important for for um, true knowledge. Paracelsus said um, that intuition can be uh, that uh, knowledge can be gained in two ways, okay, um, or in a twofold um, method. He said um, experience and intuition. You see, so intuition. Um, is to reveal certain basic truths which must then be rested and proven by experience. You see, so if, if you're learning a lot of what you're putting together through intuition, well, this is like, this is clairvoyance. And um, this is very important to couple with your experience. That's how you get true knowledge, according to great lights like... Um, like uh, Paracelsus. And Thomas Burgoyne also had this to say uh, about intuition. Let's have a look. Um, he said, um, no, I've got the wrong, the wrong uh, volume. I'll get that in a minute. But... Um, yeah, so I hope I've, an, I've answered that. I, I, I kind of forget the answer. I know you're talking about intuition, but look, uh, and the third part, uh, the second part about time speeding up, 
Um, well, Sirius is hurtling towards us at about 20 miles a second. And because of this coming together of our stars, um, and, and Walter Crittenden in his book, The Lost Star, explains that when they come around each other and they do this and they go around, um, they, um, they speed up. So time and space is kind of bending and, 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 and speeding up. Um, and uh, Terence McKenna in his um, I Ching uh, time, zero time wave um, technology uh, explained this, that he said that at a certain period in history, uh, I think it was the 1850s, we had doubled the we had doubled our our knowledge. And then he said, after a short 50 years, we had doubled it again. And uh, then after about 25 years, we doubled it again. And then it reduced to 15, 10 and everything. He said, and all the way to 20, the 21st of December 2012, it will be increasing, 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 increasing until we reach zero point and until we reach uh, maximum saturation of, uh, of consciousness at 21st of tw uh, December 2012. All right, so um, I hope that's answered that question. Sorry if it hasn't. Yep, exponential curve. And um, no, so because everything is, uh, is happening exponentially, it um, gives us the uh, impression that time is uh, speeding up, and it is. It is. Things are speeding up. There is been a there is a quickening. They call it a quickening going on. Oh. Sorry, it's really late here. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. Ancient astronaut theory. Um, ancient astronaut theory, as in extraterrestrials that uh, visited this planet? Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Extraterrestrials have visited this planet. And, and that's that. <laughs> they tell you in the monuments, the Egyptians tell you, and uh, the Mayans, etc. Yes, we were visited. And um, this, is, um, this is a fact. And these guys were of a higher consciousness. Extraterrestrials of a higher consciousness that taught us many sciences and not all those sciences were good by the way just like they're doing now extraterrestrials are actually teaching us and that's, this is why technology is, is growing so fast some of the technology since 1947 with the um with the roswell and, and all of that since we've discovered all of these and reverse engineered all of these um phenomenal objects that these uh, extraterrestrials have. I mean, we've been, um, in fact, they've got technology that we don't even know about. We've got technology that we don't even know about. Is that answering that question? I'm sorry, because I think that's what um, the question was all about. But look, um, I, I did find the Thomas Burboyne thing I was going to uh, read about intuition. And it says, he says there uh, in, on page 57 of volume two, The Light of Egypt. The Light of Egypt, Thomas Burgoyne, volume two. He says, um, there was a time when men ru 
a time when men ruled by pure intellect without its accompanying other half intuition. They were looked upon as monstrosities. The state of purely intellectual development has been brought about by the positive masculine principle reason, absorbing its counterpart, the intuition, the feminine portion. Now this is Thomas H. Burgoyne, a hermetist, a great hermetist. The state of purely intellectual development has been brought about by the positive masculine principle, reason. Absorbing its counterpart, intuition, the feminine portion, and the result by correspondent, correspondence is as, factual, is as uh, fatal as upon the interior, interior plane where the positive masculine soul denies its, the existence of its mate, thus setting upon its, this, his throne only a portion of himself as an idol, and then reasons himself into the belief that he is complete. Love has been cast out, ignored and forgotten, until at last she departs, leaving a vacancy that entirely, that eternity cannot fill. So what it's saying there is that intellect without intuition is disastrous, you see, and intellect, this is what they do, they despise intuition. And it says here that it, that, that is fatal. So, um, yeah, I, I went back back a couple of questions for that one. Um, all right, so uh, look, one more question before the break then. Thanks, Sophia. I, oh, is that, I answered the question. Well, good. Hi everyone, it's me again. I just saw that um, no one was asking the question, um, so I thought I'd ask now. Are, are we on break, Santos, or are you taking one more question? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was, but I just didn't hear that part. Okay, okay, all right. Well, this is what I was going to actually ask. Um, now, you know that uh, Danny um, Starscream has been looking into the Orion or um, Orion Nebula. Uh, I just was wondering your thoughts. I know you probably haven't had a lot of time to look into it more, but uh, can you see any connection between why the Vatican and um, Rome are so interested in Orion and uh, why they've got all their telescopes and uh, their sun cameras um, out there looking and waiting for something. Just uh, any thoughts about that would be great. Okay, thanks, Sam. And thank you, Santos, so much for uh, imparting all your wisdom and knowledge. Um, I can't get enough of it, so thank you for that. Here's my children. <laughs> Thank, thanks, um, thanks, Dee. Thank you very kindly for that. I uh, appreciate that. And I have been look at, looking at Danny's uh, work on the Orion Nebula, and he's onto something. He's onto something big, and I'm going to have him as a special guest on my uh, Monday American Freedom Radio show because I'm so impressed with his research. And he has made a big discovery. This is big. What he has found is that um, in some cathedrals around uh, Europe, there are some masterpiece paintings in, in domes uh, which, which are actually portraying very, very accurate details of the Orion Nebula. This is that little nebula that's sitting inside Orion, the constellation, um, in Taurus, okay, and you'll see it in the east tonight coming up. Orion's magnificent. When Orion comes up, he's beautiful. Um, but this is what I've said to um, to Danny. My take on all of this 
is that um, Orion is has always been known to the ancients as the the Lamb. That's the Lamb of God. You see, because Orion Orion is right here. It's right here in our bodies. You see, Aries, the ram, is in the brain here in the top of the head. The eyes and the top of the head. But the bottom of the brain also, Taurus, Taurus is, is in here. And Taurus is what gives us speech. Okay? Aries is thought. Remember, last week we did thought, speech, and then Gemini was action, the hands. So you've got noose, logos, nevma, thought, speech, and action, how everything in the universe gets done, right? Now, but Orion in the head, Orion has been called the Lamb, and the Lamb of God is Aries. That's that's the Lamb, and Orion is the Lamb. And the pineal gland is right in the first degrees of Taurus. So it's, it's right in the middle of the head, in the middle of between Aries and Taurus. And so the Lamb of God, the pineal gland, the most sacred of all those star, uh, all those organs in our body correspond to the um, Pleiades in Taurus. See, the Pleiades, the seven sisters, you'll see them. If you look over to the east tonight, you'll see the, the Pleiades, this beautiful cluster of, of stars. And in fact, um, this is what they look like. That's Japanese for the Pleiades, the seven sisters. Okay? And they are in Taurus, right here, right where the Indians put their um, little red dot. And it's the pineal gland. Because in, in there is where they say is the throne of God. And when you outstretch your arms and stand erect with your feet together, you're in the shape of the cross. And all cathedrals and temples are built in this shape. And in the Holy of Holies where the priest goes to offer sacrifices to God in heaven, in the Holy of Holies, that's in the, in the top of the head where the lamb is. You see, so the, the Orion Nebula actually has, they put Jesus in there. And it's amazing. These are, these are, these are cathedrals, these are domes that are at least six, 400 years old in Europe. And Danny's gone around and filmed them. I, I believe he's actually done a tour and investigated this and researched it. And he's found that they have very accurate details which are very, um, well, put it this way, very hard to see with a modern telescope that would have been invented uh, by Galileo Galilei in six, 1630. You would need the Hubble to take pictures of that nebula to see all of this detail. And you see the cathedrals have got this the Orion Nebula with all the, the all the the angels and all the the surrounding shapes exactly as a Hubble photograph would have it. And so I've explained to um, uh, Danny that my take is that this is the holiest part of the heavens. This is where the word is. You see, the word is this. Taurus is the word because you speak the logos. And so that's why they have a picture of Jesus right there in the nebula, the Orion Nebula, because he is the Word, he is the Lamb, and the Lamb and the Word is all happening here in the head. It's all, it's all head stuff. And, 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 it's all, and it is heaven. And that's why those domes are full of images of Orion and the Orion Nebula, because it's telling you that that is where creation happens. You see, the minds tell you that creation happened in the, um, in the heart of Orion, the constellation of Orion. That's where all the creation is coming from. Of course, it's coming from the word. It's coming from the mouth. This is where you create. You create with this. There's, and that's what all the suns are doing. The suns are, uh, and the stars are emanating light, but they are also emanating sound because sound is an is a high is a lower um, is a lower octave of um, of light. They're just it's the same thing. Light and sound is the same thing. So every star, every sun is making a, making a sound, and that's the word. And that sound creates. In fact, sound is what keeps our bodies composed, keeps our atoms together. Sound is how they made the pyramids, according to Abdel Hakim al Um, you know, the ancient in, indigenous wisdom keeper, the chemetologist. And sound 
is what those stars are doing, the word. So it's telling you. They put the word in these domes and they put the Orion Nebula there and all these angels there about because all angelic stuff is happening there. Yeah, so I hope that answered that, D. And uh, look, we'll have a quick um, break and uh, I'll be back for 10 minutes more if there's anyone who really hasn't had their question answered or would like to hang back. Apart from that, everybody else, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support and your love and your um, your desire to learn and to know. Um, I'm really, really keen to deepen the knowledge and I want to um, uh, do so by really tackling some heavy, some heavy, um, some heavy subjects if you're into the deep stuff, okay? So, and that's what I'll do next week. But feel free to um, send me a message on Facebook and give me some suggestions of what you might like me to talk on, and I'll do the homework, I'll do the research, and I'll get it, get it prepared for us, okay? I'd, uh, I'd appreciate, you know, a little bit of um, direction in that too, if, if, if you don't mind. That's why I'm asking for questions, because questions are going to stimulate, um, you know, some, some good, good thoughts, I guess. So thank you very much, everybody, who's happy to leave. Um, goodbye until next week. Uh, heaps of love and um, all the best. See you next week. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Uh, perhaps um, if you're happy to, uh, to do another question, just let me know and prompt me and um, I'll, just, I'll, ju I'll jump off because I think I've got to jump off first before you press your talk button, you see. So just prompt me, put your hand up, and I'll, um, and I'll get off. But um, I do recommend one thing, please, for anyone that's really, really eager. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, thanks, Dave, I do. I've got to get off first. So I think if, if anyone wants a question, just put a question mark. Just, put the, the, just do this, right? I think this might be the best way to go. I think this, this makes sense to me anyway. If you do that... Right? I guess that, that'll pop me. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a good idea or not, but um, I, I would recommend that you read um, <clears throat> Plato's um, Republic and um, book, uh, book six, okay? Um, all right, Judy, uh, all right, I'll just finish saying this sentence and then I'll, I'll get off and, and, and you can um, press the button, Judy. Thank you. Um, but if you if you have a read of uh, Plato's Republic um, and you go to I would start at 508 book six book six 508 and um, it talks about the sun and this is the famous words of Plato that everybody quotes about the sun. You see, they all knew who the sun was, the giver of light, but not just physical light. This is the trick. In order to understand that Jesus, the Son, saves in every aspect, one must understand the fact that it is psychic and spiritual light also that the Son gives us. Just like water has two other natures. You know, we call it ice when it's frozen, but we know that it's really water, don't we, right? So, but generally we call the evaporated water condensing water, water in the river, water in the ocean, water in your freezer. We, all, we call it water, right? Just like we do with light sometimes, you know, just a blanket expression and we don't differentiate between the three states. Well, this is the beautiful thing about light. This is why light is what saves us. And what I was going to read before about uh, Paracelsus um, is just just exquisite because it says um, he says uh, we are reminded of the Pythagorean definition which describes deity as an infinite as an infinite being whose body is composed of the substance of light and whose soul is composed of the substance of truth. Uh, truth is therefore a kind of light. And when it shines, a kind of darkness is dissipated. Truth is to, to the darkness of ignorance what physical sun is to the darkness of nature. There is also a spiritual sun, 
and the total energy of this sun dissipates total illusion. That is mortality and materiality. Illusions. Death is an illusion and materiality is an illusion. They're illusions, the two M's. Mortality and materiality. Illusions. And light dispels this illusion. You see? Um, and he goes on to say, the spiritual sun is forever dispelling the kind of darkness which we call death. The psychic sun is forever dissipating the kind of darkness which we call ignorance. The physical sun is forever dissipating crystallization. I'm going to read that again next week. Please remind me someone because that is too important not to, not to thrash out and understand in its totality. That must be considered as, as, as a group, the nature of light. Light is the saviour. All right, I'll get off now, and uh, Judy, I think it is, uh, way back there. Oh, goodness, we've got other questions. Okay, I'll take Judy. Uh, Santo, I'll ask uh, Judy's question for her because the rest of her statement is that she doesn't have a microphone on her PC. She is asking you, who is the one that put the stars in place? Beautiful question. Thank you. Um, well, the stars, as um, plasma cosmologists and electric universe scientists are now teaching, and these are scientists like um, uh, Wa uh, Wallace Thornhill, an Australian scientist who works through the, um, the website um, Thunderbolts, project or thunderbolts.org and uh, I would recommend you get on his newsletter please people thunderbolts support them these are scientists who are getting away from the stupidity of consensus scientists and teaching you know the big bang right so we've been taught that there was this like this this big bang and uh, well it may have been a bang it may have been many bangs but it's that what they're teaching is is that that is I mean the universe is expanding and it, it's all a uh, it all works on the principle of, of gravity. You see, these are erroneous. Um, remember I said that um, the, the stars are, the suns are fountain, father fountains of light. They are electric, okay? So as Walter, Walter um, Russell teaches, the genius in his book, uh, A New Concept of the Universe, he says that God uses only one tool to create the universe, electricity. All of those stars that you see are electric. And they are very close to the cause. The cause is the invisible, unknown oneness that we call prime creator, Ein Sof, Anama. And it's from that oneness that motion comes. And motion is what then is produced by those stars that appear out of the separation and the division of the oneness. Everything you see that is vis vis visible, no matter how big it is, like a, a galaxy cluster of galaxies, is produced by the invisible the invisible cause, the cause. And that's who put them there, through patterns, by patterns. They appear from the cause. And, um, and the way, the shape and the way that the universe is, is structured is exactly the same as your body. You are the measure of the universe. And, of course, those electric um, father fountains of light must, must, must be working with magnetism. Electricity cannot exist without magnetism, male and female. That's what it is, you see. And magnetism, of course, magnetism attracts the atoms to coalesce, to coagulate, if you like, because they're moving, so they've got to coagulate, like blood coagulates. You know, you get a cut. And, and, you know, it'll bleed for a while, then all of a sudden it dries up, dries up, and then it gets harder, 
and blacker and and then it starts falling away and all of a sudden your hands back to uh, new again you see right it just blood dries up coagulates well this is what bodies are you see they're like atoms are running around everywhere but all of a sudden some some electric energy which is what the soul the spirit and the soul is cause atoms to congregate and form form bodies and and vibrate slower so that bodies can be seen physical bodies can be seen with the eye because but it's still motion it's just very very slow motion our bodies are moving slowly we can't see it we cannot perceive the vibration and the invisible the invisible part we only see the visible bit because reality is coming to us in um in um oh what's the word it's coming to us uh I'll, I'll think of the word. If anyone can think of it, let, let me know. But it's not coming to us like direct current electricity. It's coming in alternate, like alternating currency, you know. And, and But we can't see the flashing on and the flashing off happen so quickly. You see, we, we physical bodies, are flashing on and off very fast. And this is why spirits can go straight through our body because they go through the... We, they go through the wavelength, the part of the wavelength where there is no, where there is, um, where there is space, space in between the vision. Yeah, like strobe, exactly, waves, exactly. All right, but I'm going to jump 